Maggots. I woke up in the middle of the night. This wasn't unusual as of late. I had only lived in the house for a month, and I wasn't used to it yet. When my husband was away on business, I found myself overcome with a sense of loneliness. I went to the bathroom and took a shot of water from a Dixie cup. As I exited the bathroom and walked toward my bed, it appeared as though the sheets were convulsing and fluttering around, as though agitated by air, but there was no fan on. The air was motionless. This shouldn't have been happening. As I walked closer, it was evident that there was something squirming and thrashing underneath the sheets. What was it? I grabbed the edge of the sheet, yanked it off, and screamed. Thousands upon thousands of fat, slimy maggots were wriggling about on my bed. They seemed to be multiplying by the second as the mound of hideous creatures grew and they fell off in clumps onto the bedroom floor and began slinking toward me. Within seconds they were up to my ankles and then my knees. When they were waist high, I couldn't move. I was standing in a quicksand pit of maggots. By the time they reached my neck, I felt like I was standing in a squirming vat of wet cement. A few seconds later, they reached my mouth and wriggled their way down my throat and into my lungs. I woke up in a cold sweat, gasping for air. I jumped up, flipped on the bedroom lamp, and looked down at my bed. It was normal. Not a maggot in sight. It was nothing more than a horrible nightmare. I wasn't able to sleep the rest of the night. My husband arrived back from his trip early that afternoon. I don't know that I had ever been so happy to see him. I grabbed him and hugged him so tight that he started to chuckle. <laughs> well, hello there. I missed you too. As he stepped into the house, I noticed that his suit was covered in dirt. What happened? Why are you so filthy? He turned to me and smiled. He had the fullest, brightest smile I had ever seen. No matter what other aspects of him aged, his beautiful teeth remained the same as if trapped in time. But there was something different about his smile on this day. His teeth appeared to be... moving. I guess I looked confused because he kept asking me over and over what was wrong. I moved in for a closer look and squinted to see more clearly. Your teeth... they're... they're moving. He held his belly like a drunken Santa Claus and laughed heartily, and his teeth continued to squirm. Only they weren't teeth at all. They were maggots, and they began spilling from his mouth in droves. I woke up on the couch. It was early afternoon. Unlike in the nightmare I just had, my husband wasn't home. He wasn't due for a few more days. The sun shining through the window was warming my face as if beckoning me to go outside, so I answered the call and began working in my flower garden. This was a passion of mine. It helped to put my mind at ease and allowed me to find a relaxed state. That's what I needed. It would help me get my mind off my horrid nightmares, which was exactly what I needed at that moment. I drove my garden shovel into the soft, churning earth and realized there was no dirt in my garden. Only maggots. Giant, juicy, wiggling maggots. They were twisting, turning, and crawling. The sight of the entire ground gyrating with the bodies of millions of maggots made me nauseous, and I began vomiting. Maggots. I could feel their bodies worming their way up my throat and blasting out of my mouth in projectile form. And I couldn't stop. The maggots had infested my body and my heaving of the slithering milky insects had become constant to the point where I could no longer breathe. I was suffocating. I woke up to the sound of knocking on the door. I must have looked distressed when I answered because the elderly woman's first remark was, Oh my dear, are you feeling okay? 
She ushered me into my own home and poured me a drink of water. I thanked her and guzzled it down as if I were a boxer in between rounds. As I got my wits about me, I finally spoke up. Who are you? The frumpy woman appeared to be in her late seventies. She was wearing a gray skirt suit and smiled as she spoke. My name is Gladys. I am your next door neighbor. She held out a bouquet of flowers. These are for you. I picked them from your flower garden. I took the flowers and my face shriveled up in disgust as I realized they were writhing with maggots. Did you know that the woman who lived here before you was a lunatic? I dropped the maggot-infested flowers and looked up at the old woman whose skin appeared to be bubbling. She held a frozen smile as slippery, bloated maggots began dripping from her eye sockets and gushing from her nose. Her bubbling skin began to burst and greasy, swollen maggots slithered their way out from her gooey wounds. I woke up in my bed. It was dark. I peered at the clock that informed me it was 12.38 a.m. Why was I having these disgusting, maggot-themed nightmares? I sat up in bed for hours and put the puzzle together in my mind. Maggots where I slept, my husband covered in dirt, the old neighbor sighting a crazy woman who used to live here, my flower garden overtaken by maggots. I leapt from the bed, ran out to the backyard, grabbed a shovel from the shed, and began digging up my flower garden. Six feet under, I found the partially decayed body of a man. He was covered in maggots. I immediately called the police. The man was the previous owner of the house. One day, his wife claimed that her husband went out for a jog and never returned. He was simply considered missing. An autopsy revealed that the man had been poisoned. His wife had murdered him, and she may have gotten away with it if it weren't for my repulsive dreams. She was arrested and now resides in a psychiatric hospital. After finding the man's body, I never had a maggot nightmare again. Broken tail light. While driving home from work one evening, I noticed I was the only vehicle on the expressway. That's one of the best aspects of my odd 10 to 7 office hours. I completely bypass rush hour to and from work. It literally saves me at least 45 minutes each way. I had some smooth jazz playing on the radio. I set my cruise control to the speed limit and was leaning back in my car enjoying my leisurely drive home when out of nowhere an older model Buick zoomed past me. Boy, that maniac sure was in a hurry. My eyes were instantly drawn to the large trunk of the old car. They sure didn't make vehicles like that anymore. I admired it, but as I gazed at the car's rear end, I noticed one of the taillights was broken, and there seemed to be some kind of red rag sticking out of it, flowing in the wind. At first, I thought they had stepped the rag into the taillight to make it less obvious to police that it was broken, but then I noticed that the rag was being waved around in an unnatural manner. That's when I saw the hand. It was a feminine hand hanging out of the broken taillight. She was waving around a red piece of fabric, obviously hoping to alert someone to her presence. It appeared that the guy driving the car had kidnapped this woman and stuffed her into the trunk. I immediately took action. I pounded on the accelerator, pulled up next to the big beast of a car, and got a good look at the driver. He looked of average size and had greasy, messy hair. He appeared nervous from the fact that I was gawking at him, and he was right to feel that way. I picked up more speed, swerved in front of the behemoth vehicle, and cut him off onto the shoulder of the road. 
I grabbed my 38 revolver from my glove compartment and raced to his driver's side door before he had a chance to take any action. I tapped on the glass of his window with the barrel of the gun. I watched as he slumped down into the seat, dejected. He knew he had been caught and slowly rolled down his window. I gave him a smirk. What you got in the trunk? He didn't answer. He just opened his door and stepped out in a defeated state. He simply took slow, disheartened steps to the back of the vehicle while fiddling with his keys. He looked at me with sad puppy dog eyes before he popped the trunk open. The woman inside was in her early twenties. She had bleached blonde hair and big boobs. Her face was covered with tear tracks of mascara. Her ankles were still duct taped together as her wrists once were. But not surprisingly, she had found a way to tear through the tape enough to get her arms free. She was wearing a ripped red blouse. My impression was that she ripped the blouse herself and that was what she was using to signal me. She popped up quickly and let out a scream. She was trying to say something, help, or maybe thank you. It was completely unintelligible and honestly, I really didn't care. I smashed her in the face with the butt of my revolver, rendering her unconscious. She collapsed back into the trunk of the vehicle and I slammed it shut. The man's eyes widened as he stared at me, unsure of what was going on, so I explained. Never use duct tape. It's too easy for them to find something to rub it on and tear it apart. I recommend parachute cord. Learn how to tie some good knots. And while transporting, stick to back roads and side streets. Never get on the expressway unless you have no other choice. And for God's sake, drive the speed limit. At the speed you were going, you were practically begging for a cop to pull you over. I gave the young man a pat on the upper arm and started back to my vehicle. I stopped when I heard the messy-haired man call out. Hey, buddy. Uh, thanks. I pointed my finger at the man and gave him a wink. Hey, guys like us gotta stick together.